These days, everyone's a stan. From Nicki Minaj's Barb's to Ariana Grande's Arianators, nearly every artist has their own dedicated legion of fans. And while stan has been used to describe many different groups in the past few decades, the word has come to mean so much more in today's cultural landscape. Stan, Stan, son, listen, man, dad, isn't mad. Stan originated from a song of the same name on Eminem's 2000 album, The Marshall Mathers LP. Dear Slim, I wrote you, but you still ain't calling. I left my cell, my pager, and my home phone at the bottom. Oh, is it based on, on uh, real life? Do you get letters like this? Yeah, I get crazy letters like that. That's yeah. why I was saying, you know, I don't understand. Like, all this is, is crazy to me. In the song, Stan was the name of a rabid fan desperate for M's attention. Eminem is in this video very little, and it's his song. The first three verses is not him, you know. Of course, it's him performing it, but he's um, playing a character, and that character is Stan. The track eventually spent 15 weeks on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, peaking at number 51. Since then, Stan has become a cult classic, and 17 years later, it was officially added to the Oxford Living Dictionary, and defined as, quote, an overzealous or obsessive fan of a particular celebrity. But as these online fandoms grew, researchers began to look at what exactly makes a Stan a Stan. Everyone needs people to look up to, people to model from, to look to another person and say, I like how they show up in the world. I want to be like that too. That's Dr. Donna Rockwell, a clinical psychologist, researcher, and author of the 2017 article, Celebrity Worship in the American Mind. Genius spoke to Dr. Rockwell to find out the psychology behind fandom. Fan relationships in the context of musical acts um, is much stronger because, ooh, you know, every time we listen to that song, the reward center of our brain is like stimulated. According to Dr. Rockwell, most people are attracted to fandoms simply because it helps them find others like them. We want to feel that we're not alone on the planet. You know, we want to feel a sense of kinship, a sense of community, a sense of connection, a sense of um, showing up in some way. I can relate to what you're saying in your song, so when I have a shitty day, I trip the way and put them on. But in terms of being a stan, the word as we've come to understand it today has gone through its own history of transformations. Eminem first came up with stan and made the word popular on his song, but Nas took it to the next level on his Jay-Z diss track, Ether, just a year later in 2001. You a fan, a phony, a fake, a pussy, a stan, I still whip your ass, you 36 in a karate class. By many accounts, Nas was the first rapper to weaponize stan by using it as an insult. I didn't I didn't want to do either. I didn't want to even do a record talking about another rap. But you felt you had to. I had to, dog. Since then, it's become a much more common slang term. And we've seen other rappers drop Stan into their own verses, too. As far as Stan is a popular slang term, it's unclear how it emerged on social media. But many point to this tweet from 2008 as one of the earliest recorded uses of Stan as a verb. Speaking of social media, according to Dr. Rockwell, online activity has played a huge part in how fandom has changed over the last few decades. Today, it has a lot to do with our immense interconnectivity through social media. It just doesn't ever stop. You know, it's 24-7. There's been plenty of research around fandoms and some of their more negative traits too, with two main branches of study, one focusing on what's known as celebrity worship syndrome and the other on parasocial relationships, which are the bond between fans and the stars themselves. And ultimately, there's positives and negatives to both. Some of the questions are, um, if my favorite celebrity met me, we'd be really good friends. Or um, if my favorite celebrity asked me to do something um, illegal, I would do it for them. You know, so that's where you're kind of getting into these areas of no longer being in control of your own choice making. So that kind of looks like addiction. Today, it's almost impossible to ignore most online fan communities. They've made their presence known by confronting anyone who opposes them. Like in mid-2018, when writer Juana Thompson found herself at the mercy of Nicki Minaj stands after a seemingly harmless tweet. This kind of harassment and online activity stretches across fandoms, and Dr. Rockwell says there's something to it. When there's no actual meaning ascribed to the qualities in the person you're following or you want to be like or you feel like you want to know. So it really is dangerous if it's just for things like um, you think they're cool or um, you like their music, but you look away from a certain lifestyle that they have, that that is not healthy. Dear mister, I'm too good to call or write my fans. This will be the last package I ever send your ass. 
Of course, this doesn't apply to everyone, and all of us have a favorite artist, whether we're just a casual listener or a super fan. And according to Dr. Rockwell, there's one thing we can all do to make our listening experience even better. We need to be the celebrity in our own narrative, in our own um, story, in the movie of our life. I'm Tia with Genius News, bringing you the meaning and the knowledge behind the music. Anyways, I hope you get this, man. Hit me back, just a chat. Truly yours, your biggest fan, just a stand.